here. Yes. Okay, we are recording, we are live, and you're gonna watch the recording afterwards. Hi everybody. It is Stephanie coming to you with my beautiful friend, Mary Alexander, for our Wednesday edition of Healthy Happy Living in the Spotlight. And I could not be more excited to share Mary with you guys because when I met her, it was one of these things, you know, when you meet somebody and like, you feel like your souls have known each other for a while, or you feel like there's just an, an immediate connection or natural connection. And that's how I felt with Mary. So I'm very excited to share what she does with you guys because it is incredibly fan fascinating and fantastic and can really help to release trauma in your life and release just energy and, and things that are stuck. So um, Mary, thank you so much. For being Thank here you. With me I'm today. honored to be here. <laughs> yes, I love that. You're I felt our... the same way. I felt the same way about you. You're. It's you know, as you go through life and you meet people, some people you just you just know that you know you're like, oh, that one's a good one. That one's like, oh yeah, there you are. <laughs> that's that's my people. That's my people. Yeah, that's um, my people. Yes, exactly. Well, what I'd like to do is just ask you a couple of questions and get to let the people that are going to see this video get to know you a little bit better and know what you do so that um, they can be blessed by what you do as well. And hopefully, you, do you hear that? That little weird thing? No. Okay, now it's gone. I don't. It's, la it's, it's lagging a little bit, but um, okay. technology is what it is. It sure is, especially today. Okay. Um, so Mary, tell us where did you grow up? So I grew up in Buffalo, New York, um, in a little town called Chictawaga. And wow. uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we moved out of there though, when I was 14. So after that, I went to my last year of high school in South Carolina. So in the middle of high school after my sophomore year, we moved to South Carolina and that is where I went to high school and graduated after junior year because that was not a fun time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was not a fun time for me. So then I ended up going to USC down there and, um, and then I got out of there as quick as I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a really hard transition to have in the middle of high school to move yeah. like that. That's a really hard transition. I'm sure there's people um, that are going to listen into this that completely relate to that too and how hard yeah. that is on a it is hard stuff that happens to us when we're young and when we're teenagers that stuff stays with us and really forms who we are as right. adults and then it's stuff it becomes stuff that we have to get over <laughs> which, right you know yeah which is part of what you do now is to help is, people yeah. the, the so, reason why I do what I do is because I fix myself <laughs> right you know, I find that that's very, very much a, a part of what happens with a lot of folks is that they, they decide that they need to make a change in their lives and then it happens for them. And then all of a sudden they're, they're finding that they want everybody else to feel as great as they do. So they go into that. Cool. Okay. So where do you live now? Now I live in Prosper, Texas. Okay. which is in the Dallas area. So yeah, after that whole South Carolina stint, I, I, I bounced around everywhere. I lived in Atlanta. I lived in Washington, DC. I lived in Maryland. Um, and then in 2003, we, my, my ex-husband got a, a transfer business, you know, career transfer to the Dallas area. And, uh -huh. and I love it. I loved Texas. I'm so grateful to be able to live here. Um, people here are just a different breed than what you find other places. It's very freedom forward. And um, that's, you know, something that's really important to me. I think that's true. I think that's very true. I've, I, yeah, I, especially right now, there's a lot of people in Texas that are showing their freedom forward. Yes. <laughs> Attitudes, let's just leave that at that. Uh -huh. um, well, cool. Okay, so what is one of your superpowers? <laughs> this, this is a very hard question because it involves tuning your own horn. So okay. right. I, I think that if I had to give my, myself props for anything, it would be that I be, be, uh, began meditating at a very young age. And mm. I think that that helped me to hone the skill of listening mm. to my intuition. 
And that I use when I'm doing what it is that I do, guiding people through sessions, because I can get quiet and just, my, my prayer before every session is always the same. I say, God, give me the words. Mm. And I'm just, uh, it, my feelers are out. Um, getting the words, what does somebody need to hear? What question do I need to ask that will take them to that next place that they, that they need to get to where they, a light bulb can go on, like a, where they can connect the dots. Mm. So I think that just my feelers, um, knowing what I need to ask and when I need to ask it and what words to use to ask the question, just totally relying on being guided in that way and relying on my intuition that I started to hone as a, as a youngster. I think that's amazing because there's so many people that love to talk a lot and love to hear them themselves so much that they have too much chatter and they can't figure out how to quiet it down. I think I lived a lot of my life that way, probably. I but, think we all do. I think yeah. that we get we get stuck in our stories mm -hmm. and our stories, meaning the things that have happened to us. And I find myself still doing this. The things that happened to us become our identity that we cling to. And, and that oftentimes then becomes the excuse for right. why we stay where we are right. uh, because we have the story going on in our head. And part of what I do is letting people be in that story, but then, start to see and start to realize, wait a minute, I, this isn't really working for me anymore. I'm not picking this. This is tapes that I'm playing and oh, I don't think yeah. I want to live like this anymore. So let's start to re rewrite those mm. tapes that we're playing. And what is it that I actually want? Because I've been just sort of fallen backwards into, into this life and into, into these pain points. And even though it's familiar, I think I'm ready to break out and to actually create something else. I love that. And I think that that comes into answering some of the questions later on. But yeah, we're skipping ahead. But, but I love it because I found that to be true when I started talking to you in, in our session that we did. I was just so amazed at how in tune and clear things were and how they were coming. And that, that really surprised me um, and was such, it, it comforted me to be honest, as somebody on the other side listening to what you had to say, because the, um, the clarity and confidence of what it was that you were saying and how you were saying it put me at ease and allowed me as someone who was going through the process with you to really kind of lean into it instead of sitting mm -hmm. back being skeptical. Um, yeah. It really allowed me to lean in. So that's awesome. Um, Okay, so what, if, what is one thing that you have found that you love about this time in our lives? Do you mean quarantine time? I do. I sure do. Yes, because yeah. it is definitely a time in our lives. It's a chapter that we will, we will all look back on at some time and be able to take something from it. So what do you, what yeah. do you love about it? And hopefully this time is ending. Yes. <laughs> Soon. Um, so... I know that I do have an appreciation and I have loved seeing the same things that everybody else has seen. People spending time together. I'm seeing a lot of people walking outside and exercising together in the park and more kids walking their dogs outside than ever before. We, we had to become a society that stays in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's what I have loved about it is definitely that people are cooking at home and um, that does have its challenges, but that is, if there's a silver lining, that is one thing that I can take away. And the other silver lining for me has been that it's, so, so I've had a, I've had a, a dream since probably five years old of wanting to be sort of a prairie girl. So you remember the series, Little House on the Prairie? Of course. Yeah. So literally I am the most obsessed person with that. And I have been when other kids were doing like dress up clothes when they were little, I had a dress up bin full of prairie clothes. Okay. So believe me when I tell you, that <laughs> I would sit in my room and I had a bonnet that my aunt had made for me and I would rock. And I would just think like I had a shawl and I was like, I am totally Laura Ingalls. Like it, I dress as it for Halloween. <laughs> I mean, next level. And there's, 
that that has been in me. It's funny, but that has been in me. It's never left. Right. And I have read. I have visited like the places where they homesteaded and all of that. I've always had this call to be more connected to the land, and I think that that is needed now more than ever. And so, with this quarantine time has really solidified for me is that I I still have that in me. I'm planning my bunnies and my chickens and my I'm looking at land. We're out on the weekend taking those long drives because there's really nothing much else to do. Right. I'm looking for land. And you know, if the world's gonna go to pot, I would really like, you know, to have a place that's really mine where I'm more connected to the land, more connected mm -hmm. to my food source more self-sufficient mm -hmm. because the world, the powers that be, it's a, it's a volatile world. And so I, I just feel that call in me to simplify and to live a more quiet existence. Um, and so that is a benefit for me. Like, it's like, yeah, that this really is still in me is something that I want to do. I don't want to like not work or not do what I do, but I, my living situation, I would like to, I would like to change it up a little mm -hmm. bit. I love that. I love that. And I think that you're absolutely right. I know that we as a family have spent more time walking all of those things in nature. And certainly, you know, I'm up at the lake right now and I love it. I yeah. love it. I love having a lake right here. I love being able to just see it. Um, this part of nature really speaks to me. Being around water speaks to me. So yes. I just, I love that you had a bin full of prairie clothes. Yes. Yeah. And you know what, that's, that, that's, the whole world is full of fear, right? This whole virus and all the things, it's fear. And I have been saying, I want love to go viral. That's what should yeah. be going viral. And you know, just from having a session with me that we, we have those, those um, elements of nature, the fire, earth, mm -hmm. metal, water, wood. And what do, what do all human beings do when they want to get away and relax and go on vacation? They're always going toward nature. They're at the mountains, they're at the lake. They're sitting around a campfire. They're, you know, on a boat. It's something to do with nature. So I just think that we're so busy and we're so frantic and we're so in our phones mm -hmm. all of the time that we forget that that's actually how we're supposed to live. And so right. that's my my homesteading. Um, like a, it's thing. like a it's like a magnet that's attracting yeah. us back to simple to the earth, to the elements. Yes, that's great. Um, okay, so what is one of just one of your all time favorite accomplishments so far? <laughs> That's easy being a mama. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I mean, it's an accomplishment. I come from a perfectionist model. This is one of the things that that I'm spending my entire life getting over is mm -hmm. needing to be perfect, and motherhood is one of those things where nobody gives you a playbook and you are thrown into it. And so I, I don't know if I can, it, it feels like an accomplishment. Um, these yeah. four spirits that I'm trying my very best to guide from, from pregnancy all the way to now. I just had a, my son graduates from high school on Friday oh. and they are my greatest teachers. That's it's, amazing. it's so hard. <laughs> it it's is. so hard. And there's nothing that's as joyful and as torturous as right. being a parent. I think that that is absolutely right. And it is an accomplishment, especially considering each one of us as a parent, whether we are a mother or a father, has a story that goes along with it. So there are um, not only accomplishments, but also setbacks along the way that teach us. And so you are one that I find that takes each one and learns something from it. And I think that's a huge accomplishment too. Yeah, no failure, just feedback. Right. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Um, uh, what is, uh, where am I? I am at number six. Why? You kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but expand on it a little bit about why you strive to be the best practitioner of heart-centered wellness there is because the world is in such desperate need of healing. Mm. I think that I know that these fear programs that we're all bombarded with, not only do we have them just innately because of trauma that all of us go through and it's nobody's fault. It's just the, it's the nature of being human is to be flawed and to be scared and to have trauma and this is the journey that we're on. And this is just, this is just the way that it is. So there's no blame here, mm -hmm. but 
I feel like it's an awakening process. The world needs an awakening process. And that's, that's what I do. And so these fear programs that we're all operating under, not even knowing that that's what we're doing, is the root of all suffering. It's the root of all wars on the planet. And the only way that we can actually have world peace or as peaceful as we can get it is through inner peace. It's not gonna be through policy because nobody is ever gonna agree. There's too many egos, there's too many different agendas. But what can I do? Where can I feel like I have control? Where can I take my power back is in me. Right. I, can, I can take the scary things that are going on in the world I can filter them through me, see them as best as I can through lenses of love and compassion. And that's the way, that's the only way that I can really control my experience is to say, okay, yeah, this is happening. How can I choose to see this? I can choose to see this as you're over there and I'm over here. I'm right and you're wrong. They're left and I'm right or wh whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But the only way that this world is going to survive is, is if we, change the glasses that we're wearing mm -hmm. from hatred and fear to love and compassion, especially love of ourselves. It's yeah. not, it seems like the word selfish is tossed around these days, like it's something bad, but you can't pour from an empty cup. And so right. I just want to teach people one person at a time, spreading that message of letting love go viral rather than rather than fear and hatred and separation and I can't give you a hug and viruses everywhere and the whole the world is scary and dirty and I just don't believe that it doesn't feel true right right and then and then to do the work to help people fill up their own cups mm -hmm. yeah I love that I love that idea of you know giving people the tools because there are so many people. I mean, heck, I didn't even know what it was you did until I met you a year and a half ago. And the, the concept of, of what you do and how you do it, I didn't even know about it, which is another reason why I so wanted to have this recording and put it out on Facebook and share with all of my people and the networks that I have, because it's important. It's important, I think, to understand that there are people like you that are so talented and so in tune that um that healing can start to happen so i love that um yeah and that it's not i'm not as a practitioner i'm not he I, i'm not healing anything no right? it's preaching that message that the body is self-healing correct that correct. the lifeline technique just raises consciousness and helps you to, to tap into that part of yourself and find like little like a flashlight i look around have a conversation with that subconscious part of us, look around there, find where you have fear patterns. And then it's really just loving yourself there. And, right. and then when we do that, loving our, our inner child, like mothering the hell out of ourselves, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and bothering ourselves in a way that our caregivers weren't capable of doing. And all of us need this. Mm -hmm. um, then it's the body does what it was designed to do. Right. Just heal. It's a tool. It's a tool. It's just a, it's a tool for the toolbox of healing. And it's something that I, it just surprised, surprised me to know and to learn. Um, cool. Okay. I want, if you will, to share two success stories. That sure. You have. Of course, well, you know, all, all names left aside, but <laughs> besides my own, because truly, well, um, it's, it's, well, yeah, it's called lifeline for, for a reason. I mean, looking back at the last four or five years of me having sessions and then learning this technique myself and then making my entire naturopath practice just this, my, my migraines are gone. My autoimmune disease mm. is no longer a thing. Um, I've released 30 pounds of emotional baggage. Wow. Um, just my... I, my knee-jerk reaction is no longer anger and kicking a hole in the wall. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. my own, the way that I parent is completely different. Just the way that my whole worldview has changed. So my health, my health and my emotional well-being, that's a huge success story for me. But one of them, I had a client who um, had tremendous trauma, uh, tremendous sexual trauma, mm. uh, kidnapping, drug abuse. Mm just, it was by far the most challenging 
client that I'd ever had mm -hmm. um, where I was scared, like looking at the, you know, cause all of my sessions are done virtually. So looking at the screen, watching someone dissociate um, and just, you know, watching someone have such, uh, will have almost like lost their will to live. That's a really scary place mm -hmm. as a practitioner because I feel so responsible. Mm -hmm. um, but through sessions, she, she always, um, I made sure that I never left her, you know, at a 10 out of 10, not wanting to be here anymore. Um, and then she saw me weekly for maybe a couple of months. And I mean, she was diagnosed with bipolar. I mean, anything, any drug that, you know, clonopin, any, any drug that you can put someone on for anxiety and depression, this girl has taken it for years. Mm -hmm. And so she's no longer... Um, I don't want to say that lifeline cures. I'm being very careful about claiming a cure. This is not, this is her own body and her own mind as her past traumas were healed. She just changed her wiring changed. Um, so there's no more bipolar. Wow. She's living on her own in her own. One of, one of her big goals, once we got past the initial, I don't want to be here anymore. One of her goals was just to live in an apartment on her own, like independently. She's doing that. Oh. She's in a relationship with a loving person. I mean, that, is, I mean, just, I, I learned so much as a practitioner um, going through that because there were moments where I was like, oh, that, you know, my prayer, God, give me the words because this is terrifying. Right. Um, and to not be triggered myself in those moments, you know, and to be able to stay centered and mm -hmm. remain holding a space for someone when there's that much, the energy of trauma and the energy of pain is so big. Um, so I learned so much with that particular client and I'm happy to report that she's good. <laughs> My gosh, what a, what a story. I, that is just such a great testimony to I mean, what our own bodies and minds and souls can do when yeah. we have the right guidance, when we have the right loving guidance there um, to help to change neural pathways or change whatever needs to be changed or release energy or whatever you want to call it. That just, golly, that's so huge. Cause there's so many people out there that are suffering. Yeah. And not everyone, you know, not everyone has that level of, you know, massive trauma. I mean, sure. my other, my other success story was going to be my daughter back before I was even certified in this technique. I had to get a certain number of practice sessions in and one of them had to be, or, uh, I can't remember how many had to be on children. Okay. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, Mia at the time was five or six and she had, um, molluscum contagion. Oh, yeah. Any, yeah, yeah. any mom will know, but she had that on her face oh, and it was so embarrassing for her. They would bleed and they were just big. And I, you know, I'm a naturopath. I thought that I had all the remedies, all the natural things and, it wasn't working and she had a very traumatic birth. She was in the NICU. Mm. Um, you know, that was, it was traumatic for me. It was traumatic for all of us. She was totally fine, fully full gestation. And then she ended up not being able to breathe when she was mm. born. So she was, they, they gave her medicine to paralyze her so that she wouldn't move. She had to have an arterial line. Like it was a nightmare. And so in those first moments of birth, those first few days when you're supposed to be snuggling skin to skin with your mom and you're not, and you know, she had a breathing tube and I remember her just trying to cry, but her vocal cords were paralyzed. No noise would come out. It was like, oh. it was terrifying and horrible. So that trauma was still there. And so when I was muscle testing her emotions, I was like, wow, she really, I mean, she's five or six years old. She really does have some stuff here that needs to be processed. And we, I didn't even know, really know what I was doing yet. I was just practicing. Yeah. But after that session, the next morning, and it sounds too unbelievable uh, to be true, but this is what happened. Those molluscum on her face, they started bleeding, they scabbed over and they disappeared. And I was like, okay, this is, this is, yeah. Because so, well, any symptom that we're having, any symptom, whether it's eczema, anxiety, sadness, anything that you wouldn't choose, which of course she wouldn't choose having this stuff on her face, sure. is a symptom. It's a way that your body has to get your attention, mm -hmm. whether it's pushing toxins out saying, hey, please pay attention to me. There's something here you're missing. There's mm -hmm. something here that needs your attention. And so it, 
what we do is like we're reframing our symptoms that are painful saying that's not we're not being victimized we're not being punished something innate inside of you that is amazing that is your that it, something some power that has created you is desperately trying to get your attention so that you can become better so that you can be healed it's our nature it's our birthright to be healed and whole and so that's what happened when she processed those things out. It just, it never came back. And it, she had wow. it for years. It's wow. Crazy. Wow. And I have children walking around half naked behind me. So don't worry. About As they should be. <laughs> Where's the lake? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, that's life. This is nature. We're, we're, we're soaking up the sun. Um, that's amazing to me. That is amazing to me. And it's amazing that, you know, our bodies, it's true. Our bodies are divinely appointed and they, they have these amazing abilities. And so that's wonderful. So what about a failure or something that did not go so well that you oh, learned from? So many. So, but the, the, what really stands out to me right now is the, I don't want to say hundreds, <laughs> but I might all of the clients or potential clients that I could have helped, but because I was too um, thinking that I needed to explain the technique itself, mm. getting caught up in 16 steps and science, 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 and um, you know, thinking that anybody cared, like, mm. you know, um, instead of just talking about, listen, I, am skilled in a technique that's going to help you to feel better mm. and the body is self-healing and, and and if you're not if you're not choosing this then let's figure out what it is that you do choose and not trying to overwhelm someone i wasn't trying to overwhelm but i ended up i think overwhelming people with mm. look how sciencey this is look how legitimate this is me getting caught in my own limiting belief really mm. that i had to convince somehow that i you know that look at me, look how, look how legitimate this is. Mm. Um, just being in the convincing business and getting caught in that trap. And um, yeah, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> that's so good because that's so important for so many of us, especially people that I have networked with in the last year and a half and people that I've learned about what it is they do. And a part of this whole series is to bring that out and to say, listen, this isn't just about the science or the technique or whatever it is, you need to, because, because there are, you know, there's plenty of people out there that are health coaches or plenty of people out there that have a product or a service, but, um, but not only is it, you know, there's certain people that other people need to know about. Mm -hmm. And if we are stopping at the limiting beliefs of ourselves, myself included, that then we don't offer our best version of ourselves to the people that really need to know about what it is that we do so that yeah. they can reach out. So you're absolutely right. That's, uh, that's a failing forward though. You know, yeah, that's, again, there is no failure, right? It's feedback and it's something that I had to go through. It's something that I continue to go through. I, you know, I wanted to be fully booked two years ago, but I know now that two years ago, I wasn't ready. Right. I just wasn't ready. Right. And I know you only know what you know at the time. I have this, you know, and I just, one of my personal um, things that I have been healing from, it's a journey, right, is, is rejection. Mm. And so just the process of starting a business and going through all of those marketing challenges and getting the word out challenges and then you're met with rejection of course and to not have that reflect or to not have me internalize that and say i'm being rejected you know and so anyway it just became part of the story of oh wait a minute it was it was without any of that i wouldn't you know be i wouldn't know what confidence is if you Absolutely. don't have the yin and the yang how are you supposed to have anything to compare it to you have to have failure in order right. to enjoy and recognize what success or whatever success is for you. So I'm Absolutely. grateful for all of it. It's painful, oh. but necessary. Yeah, I'm reading Conversations with God again right now. Oh, again. And that whole idea that you have to have, you have to have one to understand what the other is mm -hmm. and how important that is at a base foundational level. 
Um, and somebody very smart said to me recently, you have to go through this hard time in order for you to help the people and have empathy for the people that might go through this after you so that you can help to lead them down whatever journey they have. So I think that that's very, that's poignant. That's very important. Yeah. And how I wouldn't be able to be a practitioner I, I, without understanding my market, right. without understanding exactly who the people are that I know I can help because right. that's my, who I know I can help is me 10 years ago. Right. Right. right? The mom right. who's overwhelmed, mm -hmm. the riddled with anxiety, crippled with low self-esteem, knee jerk reactions of anger, not even understand, you know, guilt, laying in bed at night, feeling guilty for all the things I didn't do that day. Right. One promising myself that tomorrow's going to be different, that I'm going to change, that right. somehow uh, tomorrow I'm going to have patience somehow. Right. And right. then waking up and feeling like I failed yet again. And yes. that's who I was. And so that's who I know I can help. Oh, and that is so many people on this earth right now. There are so many people that could go, yep, that's me. That is exactly how I feel. And, it, and then all the science and all the other stuff kind of goes away because then the person says, oh, wait, she can help me. That's yeah. Another reason to have this live. Um, yeah. And one yeah. of my mentors says, they don't care. Why are you trying to talk about this technique and all the different steps and exactly what you're doing? They don't care if you slap them across the face with a wet fish and said, here, this is going to make you feel better. They'll <laughs> say, sign me up for that because I just want to feel better. I don't really care how. Right. I, they just know that it's not through drugs and it's not through years and years of, of sitting on a therapist couch. So what, it would, let's do this. Yeah. You know? Oh, totally. Absolutely. And then somebody that's gone through it and has a, has a story to share makes it so much more poignant and, and somebody can connect with that and say, yes, that's what I want. Awesome. Okay. Well, I could talk to you for hours. We're going to end on this. How do people find you when they're interested in having a lifeline session or, or talking to you? How do they find you? What's the easiest, best direct way? Yeah, they can find me here on Facebook. Um, they can message me. They can go to my website. I have some videos there explaining in layman's terms, just a little bit, very short 90 second videos of, of what the lifeline technique is. And of course, all my contact information there. So my website is www.alexandernaturalhealth.net. Perfect. And what we'll do is once this gets buttoned up and we put it on Facebook, um, I will attach that or have you attach oh. that website underneath so that it's right there and people can click the link and get a session with you. And let me tell you guys, it is fascinating, emotional work. And it's so necessary for those that are open to it to really take a moment to have a conversation with Mary, because this is just, it's stuff that you just don't even know is buried. Yeah. You and it's really, know. it's really just showing up to actually have a conversation with past parts of yourself. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And, and allowing that, that to just allowing it to do the work that it will naturally do for you, um, which is amazing. Well, I, Cannot thank you enough for all of the patience with our technical issues. And, you know, we do what we can in these moments, but I just am so grateful for your friendship and for who you are and for your journey, because without your journey, I would not have met you and I would not have been able to receive my own healing and giving, giving myself that own, uh, my own story of, um, of my own self-esteem needs without knowing you. So thank you for thank stepping you so into your brilliance so that, so that I selfishly can know who you are. <laughs> I love you, Stephanie. Thank you. I love you too. Well, thank you so much. And um, click the link below guys, because it is worth it. All right. You guys have a great one. Bye.